Hello everyone, it's DuckFerry07. Today I'm playing Ors of Scum again. This time I'm doing it with Persist and Troll and Wandering and Sheldred. So obviously what this deck what this deck misses is cheap, good, powerful threats and card advantage. So we got exactly that. A persist with troll turn 2, 5, 4, very strong threat, hard to block. That is, I think, a good reason to keep your start in hand. If you have a, a troll turn 1 cycle into turn 2 persist, that is almost a good enough reason to keep if your hand, rest of your hand is not absolute trash. Also, sometimes you can keep a mid rangey hand with one ring. Uh, of course, you can keep a uh, hand with the Solitude Scam or with the Grief Scam. Uh, this deck is not the same as uh, the Red Black, uh, red black uh, version. You don't play proactively, you don't aggressively, mostly you don't aggressively just uh, scam Solitude on turn 1. You have to wait, play a bit longer game, play uh, a bit less uh, aggressive than when you're playing Red Black Scam. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously uh, you need to adjust to this gameplay and uh, think a little bit differently when playing it. Okay, so uh, we are going to watch a video that I played with a slightly different list. I didn't have Shieldreds in the main. Uh, I had one. Uh, I had. Uh, I had them on the sideboard. Also, in the process of tweaking the list, I had one main, one side, but I ended up uh, going with uh, two, uh, two of them on the side, and no fatal pushes, but prismatic ending in the main and one push on the side. Okay, so this is the variant I decided uh, that felt uh, best at the moment, but uh, obviously uh, there are some, uh, there are cards definitely that. Uh, can be uh, played uh, in the main at that I'm not uh, currently don't have it in my list and yeah okay so uh, but this is definitely what uh, what what I was most satisfied with at this moment for the persist variant uh, I still think the gigs variant uh, with the more creatures from the last video is very good but if you're playing the one ring I think uh, pers having persist is pretty good additional way uh, to uh, scam uh, additional early threat with the troll and also additional way, way to scam your elementals okay so uh, that is it uh, we are going to go through the gameplay and see how it went I won't show the sideboarding plan as my sideboard was uh, significantly different in the league we are going to see Okay, so playing first here, keeping a pretty good hand. I have Bowmaster, I have Solitude, I have Persist. Uh, this is definite uh, example of a good hand without uh, Grief Scam. That's very keepable. Okay, so uh, I can go for... Uh, uh, I can obviously go for uh, uh, Solitude here. But uh, since my opponent didn't play a land pre-combat, I can just go like uh, ping the soul scar, block it with orc army token, then save the solitude for the later turns. Here I go for the bowmaster, and my opponent is mana screwed it seems, so they decide to uh, concede immediately and go to the game two. Okay, so in the game two. Uh, I wanted more uh, uh, removal uh, in the main and some graveyard hate, so I boarded in a hearse, boarded in them, uh, the temporary lockdown, very good card for this matchup. Okay, so here uh, I was able to uh, cycle the troll and nothing special at the moment, but uh, I have the removal for the next turn. Okay, so uh, yeah, another dam is good. I can save it for a turn four, and maybe uh, or just go for just go for it next turn. My opponent uh, goes a bold face attack with a Swiss spear. They don't. Uh, they didn't really have a great hand in these two games. First game they were screwed. Uh, second game uh, they didn't have much really so it was a pretty easy game for me uh, I boarded in Chalice of the Void, Chalice of the Void obviously very good card, strong card against the Provost 
So opponent uh, here plays the unholy heat into Shellis just to pump the Swiss spear and they're at the moment on zero cards in hand. So yeah, pretty bad for them. I play the dam, kill their creature, play the stone forge and get the another concede. Very easy, uh, very easy game here. Let's check out another one. Okay, so uh, playing first, I have a turn one at cycle troll, turn two persist. That's pretty good. Also, I can follow it with a turn one fatal push if necessary. But opponent has uh, Totsies, straight trait into Totsies. They're probably on that shadow. Uh, opponent decides to take the fatal push. This means I'm able to reanimate my troll which I'm very satisfied with. Unfortunately, opponent has this member, but yes, they shocked in twice and double Totsies plus this member <laughs> cycle street rate, that's a lot of life. And I was able to get the Caldera on the field and opponent doesn't have a solution for it. So that is it. Opponent concedes. Let's check out the game two. Yeah, so opponent uh, painted a bit, little bit too much, and uh, yet yeah, then I just resolved uh, Caldra, and that was it. Okay, so game two, uh, finally starting with a uh, grief scam, uh, taking uh, drown in the lock, and the Colgans. So these are two cards that can kill uh, my grief. I decided to leave a fable in their hand. I was hoping to get the fable uh, with ephemerate or persist in my hand. Uh, so uh, I target grief with ephemerate, but unfortunately, opponent top decks the dress down, so they get the draw from the dress down, and I, I don't, uh, I didn't, uh, I was not able to use the uh, ephemerate. So my opponent. Uh, I, I was able to put uh, Solitude into play, didn't kill anything, just as a 3-2 beater and uh, opponent uh, <clears throat> opponent uh, traded with Goblin Shaman, uh, left 3 damage in, so I was able to get the Caldra again and I had Grief as another attacker here, so my opponent, uh, again I put Caldra on the field and the Grief attacking for 8 damage this turn, that is too much for the opponent and they decide to concede. Again another very easy game, but that's uh, what you get when uh, you draw good with the Grief Ephemerate. If you can do a little bit of follow up, these games can be like really easy. Also, uh, of course, sometimes you get uh, really, really crappy draws in a deck like this, but uh, sometimes your decks, your draws can be just extremely, extremely powerful. Okay, so my hand was really awkward here. I kept, if I kept a hand where if I draw a single elemental, either like Solitude or Grief, I can do a lot but without them uh, and uh, it can be pretty bad but my opponent is not really doing much so i can try to resolve uh, some spells uh, first i try to go for the wandering oh, my, my opponent is playing uh, controlish deck it's probably another uh, death shadow so I go for the second one ring, hoping they don't have another counter. Uh, they have it, that is okay. Opponent plays the Ledger Shredder and passes the turn. Okay, so they go uh, for a Merc Tide Regent uh, plus Shredder, discarding a Fatal Push. This is totally fine by me, they're playing, probably playing that Shadow deck. And I'm a Solitude deck, so that's pretty good for me. So I was able to go uh, Exile Shredder, uh, Ephemerate my Solitude, take the Merktide and put opponents to 21 life, which is great against their uh, future Shadows. 
Okay, so I play my uh, land tapped and start attacking with solitude. Okay, my opponent is a fatal push deck, so it's kind of hard for them to uh, deal with uh, solitude. And yeah, Lion Sash, I was really surprised how good uh, Lion Sash actually was in a lot of these games. It was really, really relevant. Uh, against the Yagmoth, against the Merktide, against the Shadow decks like this. A really, really a huge amount of uh, relevant uh, matchups. And yeah, okay, so opponent, I have the Solitude here. Opponent goes for a uh, Bowmaster to jump here. But uh, Lion Sash can, can grow to pretty, pretty large threat. And I also have a Troll and a lot of damage on the field. And uh, I can pump this solid to like infinitely almost. And they decide to uh, counter my Lion Sash ability, but in response, I uh, use almost uh, all of my uh, mana available for the Lion Sash. So I grow my solid to 1110. Opponent has to jump this, and then they are on. Um, Eat life with the two huge huge threats uh, on my side of the field opponent uh, definitely can't uh, kill this solitude and that is the game okay so another uh, easy match easy game so let's check out the game too okay again same side slim, similar sideboarding plan I want uh, analysis first I want a dam Definitely because my opponent is playing uh, a Merktide, so I definitely want them, I want hers, and uh, that's it basically. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't, I had, I think I had one sheltered main, one in the side. At this point, uh, I, I think I boarded the second sheltered probably in most of my games. Yeah, the card was just so good, and uh, basically, the reason why I decided to go for uh, two of them in the main. Okay, so uh, I play the Stoneforge Mystic, getting the Lion Sash here. A Lion, I was really impressed with Lion Sash so far. It was really a relevant a threat they had to kill uh, um, as soon as possible. And you can play around uh, Orcish Bowmaster with it really well. And yeah, I was starting to eat their graveyard, first with Lion Sash and then with hers. That's really good against their Merktide. Merktide is one of 3-4 threats they play, so it's really relevant for them. Uh, I go for the Grief, unfortunately opponent has a counter spell there. Uh, still I was able to like grow my hers a, a lot. And... Uh, Eat their graveyard, making their Merc Tide really bad. Okay, opponent goes for Unmoor Digo. Didn't see that one yet in um, against Solitude decks, but it's definitely an option playing Ego to get rid of the Solitude. Uh, but I didn't really mind it. Okay, so here I play the Sheldred. The Sheldred is a strong threat. Opponent has to deal with it. Uh, they have a dismember for it. I play a Bowmaster in response and uh, they play their Bowmaster so they trigger uh, the Shredder, trigger my Bowmaster. So I ping them a uh, phase for one. And they play a Shadow which is really really large but at this point I can, uh, I can hard cast the Caldra. So it doesn't matter if they uh, kill uh, if they kill a Stoneforge, but unfortunately, opponent has uh, Totsies there. Yeah, uh, so I uh, my draws were like really good, to be honest here. So I, I draw the, the one ring into Bowmaster, finishing off my opponent. In a situation which was not the easiest for me, but I had plenty of good draws. Of course, opponent also top decked the Totsies to take my Caldra, uh, which would be very, very hard for them to deal with. Uh, almost impossible, and yes, yeah, so, but uh, I had even better top deck. Uh, one ring into Bowmaster, even if I didn't get the Bowmaster immediately, like drawing card here, then drawing uh, two cards again on my turn would be like really powerful. And yet, yeah, that was it. Another easy win. 
and let's check out the match 4. In match 4 I actually only played one game and opponent uh, conceded the entire match after that. Let's check out that one. Okay, so I started I started the game with very odd hand. So uh, two two one rings and the grief. So pretty pretty slow game, but I'm playing first and once I resolve the one ring uh, yeah it can definitely get out of control. Uh, so my opponent was playing a Kahira deck. So Kahira deck let's say Dimir based uh, maybe they're mana screwed or color screwed or whatever but uh, I decided to go for the grief first I have persist for the next turn yeah my opponent plays mystigate so they're probably just a bit color screwed at the moment uh, for uh, mostly for leyland binding nothing else uh, really uh, yeah so I was able to uh, to resolve the one ring here and yeah resolving the one ring against a control deck is really good in a situation like this obviously so uh, I, uh, I draw into stoneforge mystic opponent seems to not have answer for the ring and that's like really bad for them opponent goes for wandering emperor don't really care about that one I have I have ephemerate to protect my stoneforge I have persist to put a calder on the field uh, this way I can um, Caldera is a yeah, significant uh, threat in this matchup opponent finds a uh, hollow fountain goes for a uh, solitude but yeah as I said I have ephemerate here so I'm able to find another equipment I have sword I have lion sash I'm pretty happy with uh, having a uh, lion sash uh, as a third equipment uh, at the moment uh, and really lot of lot of relevant matchups for it okay so here uh, I, I had plenty of plays but I decide to go for uh, a Kaldra kill <coughs> go for the Kaldra kill the Wandering Emperor draw, uh, put another one ring into play and yeah here opponent uh, on their turn I also pitch casted a grief I saw their hand it was two spreading seas dress down and drowning lock which was yeah, not really a match for uh, my hand uh, in my hand uh, I draw uh, two more cards with one ring uh, play the bow masters and uh, uh, persist the grief take uh, uh, take the archmage charm from their hand leaving them with two spreading seas and the dress down and that's like really mediocre into the bowmaster and yeah another bowmaster in my hand uh, one ring on the field uh, caldra plus sword that is too much for my opponent and yeah uh, here they decided not to play the second game but conceded entire match immediately uh, okay, so this was uh, I showed it in a, uh, in a, a reverse order. We started from the last match towards the first one, but this was actually the first uh, match of the league, and uh, I lost this one. I had incredible uh, hand in uh, game one uh, with the grief scam. I was playing against Merktide, uh, taking uh, taking bolt. Uh, and Dragon Ray Channeler, leaving them with a Preordain. And I had the Grief Scam, so I was able to take Ragavan 2, leaving them with just Counter Spell in hand, nothing else. So uh, I had the One Ring in hand, this means I have to bait this Counter Spell with anything and resolve the One Ring for the win. Opponent plays the island, passes the turn with the counter spell. Uh, of course, they have to counter the Stoneforge Mystic, so this is a perfect bait uh, to resolve the one ring on the next turn. Uh, of course, opponent plays the counter spell. Uh, there, then on their turn they go for iteration, which I don't mind at all, especially since they play the tapped steam vents. And I top deck another ring and against Merktide in a situation where they don't basically have anything on the field. This is as good as game over. Opponent concedes and that is a win in game one for me. Okay, so really, really close to trophy in this league. Extremely close, but yeah. Uh, I decide to uh, mulligan the one lander. I keep a decent six. 
I think I think I had uh, I think I had a misclick in this game. We will see. I don't remember it even anymore. Okay, so opponent starting first with a channeler, a troll uh, t um, <coughs> finding a swamp, and uh, turn two persist into swamp is pretty cool. Unfortunately for me here, opponent has uh, the spell pierce. Yeah, this would, this could be. Yeah, this was the most relevant, uh, the most relevant uh, situation in this game. If they didn't have uh, this spell pierce here, I, I would, I think I would definitely win this one. Okay, so opponent uh, plays uh, expressive. Opponent plays expressive. End of turn, I have the bowmaster. And on my turn, I have the one ring. Seems like a perfect situation for me. I go for the one ring and resolve the one ring. And this seems like this seems like easy, easy win for me. So bowmaster resolved attacking. I have protection from everything. Drawing cards with the one ring. Yeah. So unfortunately, I didn't have my shieldreds in. I think I didn't have my shelters in, so I had a lot less uh, hits, a lot less good hits uh, at this point. Yeah, uh, I've draw to uh, go for another ring. Unfortunately, opponent has a counter for that, and they can go for attacks with uh, eight eight Merktide. Yeah, so this is uh, yeah, if I if I had my list uh, right now, if I had uh, the, that same list. Uh, I showed you in the beginning of the video, I would probably win this one, but uh, yeah, I didn't have a lot of the cards uh, I had then on the side and uh, I was not able to get it out of this because I didn't have enough removals on the side, I didn't have a sheltered in the main to uh, gain, so gain some life with it, to, to survive, so I had a lot lot less uh, draws in situations like this, uh, I included one get lost. Uh, as additional removal on the side, I had uh, also had that uh, other removal three mana one. I can't remember the name. Okay, we will we will comment on it uh, after this game. So this was game three. I was really really close to winning that game one and getting the trophy there. Uh, I was focused here. Uh, I kept a really mediocre hand like Stoneforge and Lion Sash is is not really uh, really good. But uh, I was focused on getting my basics, uh, trying to play a fair game here. Uh, unfortunately, opponent has a spell snare on the draw. That is like the best thing they ha they can have on the draw here. Okay, uh, I go for the lion sash uh, to hit their graveyard, start taking the spells. I took the Mishra bubble. Uh, I was able to. I, I went like a fatal push the channeler and then uh, try to persist the troll, but they had a counter for that. So yeah, this was an unfavorable position for me. Of course, I have some very very strong uh, draws from the top, like um, one ring. Of course, uh, sheltered is great, but also like sheltered is pretty easily. Uh, pretty easily uh, often answered with Bagdmerktide if they have the heat but in this situation they I was thinking here like I could go obviously attack uh, into Merktide they would trade like 90% uh, they would definitely trade but here I got the solitude maybe I should have uh, I think yeah I think not trading was a good decision because later my opponent showed they have the dress down. I'm not sure at which point exactly did they draw the dress down. Uh, yeah, but they had it. So if I at this point if I went to attack with Sheldred, they would just play the dress down. My Sheldred would lose the dead touch and die to Merktide. So it was a good decision. And yeah, finally opponent. Uh, Opponent finds delirium or finds the heat. They can kill my uh, 
a Shellred and now they have this big Merc Tide on the field and I need I need exactly like uh, the one ring, result of one ring or something like that. Uh, yeah, and um, my draws were not good. Again, a flooded seven lands on the field. That is way, way too much for a deck like this. And yeah, that was the game. Uh, opponent put me on 10. Uh, they have 10 power. They have kill for the next turn. I draw a grief for the turn, but that's not good enough. And that is it. So that is entirely uh, entire league. This was my f actually my first league uh, with this deck. And I st it, the list still wasn't like fully tweaked the way I like it. And uh, if I had the tweaked list, I would probably uh, be able to get that uh, trophy. And the deck felt uh, deck felt good. It didn't feel like a tier one deck, but felt very playable and uh, g great, great into certain meta games. I I believe that this deck should be really strong against a Yagmoth, which is like really top tier uh, deck at the moment. Um, having a solitude scam plus the one ring in in your deck and uh, sheltered, I think that's really strong. Uh, also, uh, like Lion Sash, it was like really cool tech that helped uh, in a lot of uh, frequent uh, matchups at the moment. So that's another uh, thing, and yeah, really satisfied with this one. I think uh, I think it this works well. It com feels competitive, uh, not tier one as I uh, said, but definitely uh definitely a tired deck that needs to be uh taken into consideration and it definitely feels like a fun both fun and uh serious uh, competitive option for those interested in it okay so uh, that is it uh friendly reminder to click like uh, click subscribe uh comment in the video uh, i want to show uh, to see your thoughts uh, and of differences and uh, between this list and my previous uh, also a scam list from like maybe two three weeks ago uh, on my channel uh, that list played more creatures played the gigs uh, played the Esper Sentinels it was played a lot lot more creatures and no one ring no persist no troll I want I'm curious to see uh, what do you people uh, prefer more between uh, these two lists and uh, yeah so that is it for today again uh, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye